traffic surround metal 8 Lima November, taking off runway 17, going to remain in the pattern, summer Alright everybody, so uh, today's going to be another day where I'm uh, working on my brother's in-laws plane, but I thought I had a little rant here, which is uh, kind of kind of goes with a lot of the fly board bear stuff, and if you've heard this before, it's because uh, William Wynn says it quite a bit. And uh, when I say get out, in the, get out of the uh, stands, get in the arena, and get into light sport, what I'm really talking about is uh, the fact that a lot of the magazines, uh, even the organizations, AOPA, EAA to some extent, they're all focused on this mythical person that's going to spend a million, million and a half dollars to uh, buy this brand new pressurized turboprop that's going to be the biggest game changer in aviation. Oh, well, I'm sorry, for most of us, never going to happen. I'm never in a million years going to own a million dollar airplane. Best I could probably do is I might be able to sell this someday and maybe get a Comanche or something like that. Something in the hundred, hundred and fifty thousand dollar range. But for the majority of people in aviation, the odds of us ever buying that million dollar turboprop, or a turboprop for that matter, are pretty much non-existent. So, begs the question, why do a lot of people sit there and and dream and ogle about things that, um, that they'll never be able to get into, and then wonder why, you know, 10, 20, 15 years, you know, 10, 15, 20 years later, again, they're uh, sitting on the sidelines and never really ever get into aviation. But here I am, and I'm enjoying the heck out of this. I've got a you know, light sport, it's a Zenith 601 HDS. I'm able to travel around at, a, well, right now, 112 knots true airspeed. Ground speed's killing me because of a little bit of a headwind, but you get the idea. I'm able to go out, I'm able to fly, I'm able to take people, I'm able to enjoy this, but I'm doing it in a way that I'm not spending you know, two families' fortunes to do it. So I wonder how many people have been held out of aviation or thought, oh, I could never afford it, mainly because of the magazines and the articles and everything else saying, hey, uh, you know, you need this brand new Piper Meridian at $3 million. This is the best thing that you'll ever buy. And to be honest, most of us will never, ever, ever buy that. I don't know. To me, it's kind of interesting. That's why I say, you know, get out of the, uh, stop being a spectator, get in the arena, and enjoy light sport. Because again, light sport is the way that a lot of us can get into aviation fairly inexpensively. Especially if you're willing to build, I think uh, the Zenith 650, or 750, um, uh, what is it, the 750 Cruiser is kind of a great little cross country plane. Um, I like the low wings better, but that's just personal preference. But anyways, the, uh, the high wing Zenith 750 uh, Cruiser Heck, with a 130 horsepower Corvair motor on there, you're going to do 140 miles an hour. You'll be able to take two people. You'll have decent amount of baggage, more than I've got here. I mean, why not? I mean, that's something that can be done by, let's be honest, the majority of people. And even in, you know, I hate to say it, even in the experimental world, it's getting a little crazy. Because, I mean, a Vans RV, come on, you're going to be $200,000 into that by the time you're up in the air. I don't know. To me, it seems like, hey, there's there's a niche for everybody. You know, if you got RV money, great. If you don't, you know, Zenith money is just fine. I mean, you can get started Zenith for just buying a rudder kit for, I think, it's like three or four hundred bucks. Uh, but yeah, no, the average completed price of a Zenith is probably more in line with about, um, uh, probably about 45000 Heck, Sonex, that was one I thought about before I got into this plane. For a Sonex, you can easily get into that plane for somewhere around thirty. That's flying. So, again, there's a lot of options out there, which is why I keep saying uh, get out of the uh, get out of the stands, get in the arena, join the light sport lifestyle. All 
Alright, well, let's head on in and uh, go to work on that 172. Power's on over the runway. Summer Traffic Experimental 8 Lima November, clear runway 017, Summerton. So I'm done flying for the day. It was bumpy anyway. It was below 1,000 feet because we have these weird, weird inversion layers. Anyways, first order of business was getting this plane clean. There was a lot of dirt and dust that had blown in over the last couple of months. And we're going to put some Corrosion X in the plane just to clean up some of this little surface corrosion we saw. And we didn't want it turning into mud on the outside. Alright, also today we wanted to make sure that we got the uh, horizontal stabilizer uh, completely fitted and ready for paint. So, the uh, previous A&P that had been working on it had replaced the two nose skins on here and never finished actually fitting them and filing them, so that's what I'm up to today. So as you can see, just trying to make sure that each side is even, and so I'm going back and forth and back and forth, just making sure that as I file down, it's definitely uh, even on both sides. 